Hi everyone, Steve Goodwin here with anchor test video number 128. Today we will look at this 10 kilogram genuine Bruce anchor and we'll make a few comparisons to the previously tested 10 kilogram Lumar claw. Now the Bruce anchor did come out at 21 pounds on my scale where the claw came out at a solid 23 pounds uh, once it read 24. So it's a good two or three pounds heavier, but the claw is dimensionally smaller than the Bruce in nearly every way. For example, the length of the shank is 21 and a half on the claw, while it is 23 for the Bruce. Uh, the height of these fluke tips are four and three quarters for the claw and five and three eighths for the Bruce. Doesn't matter how you measure it. Uh, length of the fluke is over 11 inches on the Bruce and it is under 10 inches for the claw. How is it that this smaller anchor can weigh a couple pounds more? It's all about the thicknesses of these structures. Uh, the Lumar Claw is a casting, whereas the Genuine Bruce, I believe, is a forging. And cast structures are generally not as strong as, as forged metal. So I think they needed to make this anchor uh, thicker to get the adequate strength but it comes at a cost, and that is performance. Um, if you wanna just skip the whole rest of the video and just walk away about which anchor's better, it's this one. And it's, it's, it's better because these, these fluke shapes and all these shapes are thinner, they're easier to penetrate, and perhaps most importantly, the leading edges of the Bruce anchors are quite sharp, whereas the leading edge of the claw is very, very blunt. You might be able to notice that the angle of the tops of both of these shanks is a little different. It appears that the, the claw uh, shank might be angled upward a bit more, and you might question the fluke to shank or throat angle might be different, but it's not as, uh, not as different as you may think. There's a lump of metal on the bottom of the claw, and it's causing the anchor to tip back on the bench. If I push it forward on that lump, we can see now that these shanks are very similar. Uh, there might be a degree or two more angle down on the fluke at this point, but uh, they're, they're very, very close. I, I don't think there's a significant difference in throat angles between the anchors. You might also ask, ah, what about the, the setting tip weight? And they are very, very similar. Both anchors are right in the low 30s. Uh, the, the, the claw is actually a little better. It had 34% of its weight on the tip in this position, where the Bruce is 33%. As, as the video showed in the previous test of the claw, there was a few cases where the anchor was just dragging along the seafloor in this position, unable to penetrate. It never happened with the Bruce. The Bruce, if it got to this position and you pulled on it, it would always go upright. What's the reason? It's all about this blunt, very, very thick structure that you're trying to get to penetrate, whereas this one is much more knife-like and it, no problem, just goes right in. So I've let the cat out of the bag. There's no question the Bruce is better than the claw across the board. But perhaps a better question is, is how does the Bruce compare to the other 20 pound range anchors in my tests? Let's go find out. Okay, we'll start off with a holding check in the sandy mud seabed. This is the short chain, only 12 feet of chain. Uh, it's five to one scope, 30 foot water, 150 road. And here I'm pulling at 315 pounds. There is a bit of motion, but you know, I consider that to be a usable amount of motion. But once uh, power is increased to the next increment, which was uh, 395 pounds, the anchor could not cope with it. It uh, popped out of the seabed, carrying a pretty good glob of mud. Uh, it did reset, but it never did hold as much as that initial set. Here's a repeat of that test, but this time with much more chain. We've got 80 feet of 516 chain instead of just 12 feet. Scope and everything else is the same. And there in the initial uh, ramp up in power, uh, the anchor did dive mostly out of sight. Uh, the angle of pull is much closer to horizontal. Uh, the anchor was holding fairly well here at 395 pounds instead of 315 with the short chain. And then it didn't release until 465 pounds. Uh, as opposed to 395 with the short chain. So that is an improvement. Um, you, you be the judge of whether it's worth it. Adding uh, all that chain was very, very heavy. And certainly if you added a similar amount of weight just into the anchor and kept the chain short, you would end up with even better holding power. Here's a couple clips of the 23 pound Lumar claw. We can see the anchor's having trouble uh, attaining the upright position. Uh, other tests that I did, I did get it to be upright, but 
uh, it averaged out at about 200 pounds of holding. And if you consider that it is a heavier anchor, uh, it's only just a little bit more than half the holding power per weight as the genuine Bruce. Now we're back to the genuine Bruce anchor for a veering test in the sandy mud. Uh, the normal protocol for the 20 pound range anchors is to conduct this test at 500 pounds of baseline, but this anchor can't hold that, so we downgraded to 315 pounds of baseline thrust. The boat is pointing away from the anchor, it is veering or moving to starboard at about 1.5 to 2 knots. Uh, do this through 180 degrees, or try to. Uh, this anchor was started off doing fairly well. Again, uh, the caveat here is that the anchor is uh, only get, getting 315 pounds. But at the 120 degree mark, the anchor does do a full release. I'll slow the playback down to one quarter speed so you can watch this. And I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, this anchor just picks up a big ball of the seabed that breaks away from the surrounding seabed. Uh, at that point, all holding power is lost. And this big new shape, uh, this blob shape, just lifts up and away it goes. The anchor was able to reset all oh, marginally after that. It was clearly it was mud fouled and was able to reset but with only partial holding power. I'll remind everyone that there are other anchors in this size range that can complete this veer perfectly and hold over 1,000 pounds of straight line thrust. Next is the 180 degree reset here in the sandy mud. Anchor sets just fine initially and it, it, it actually succeeds at this in the basic intent of the test, which is, will the anchor reset? And yes, it will. H however, it never makes the same or as large a holding power as when it is clean. We see there it was dragging across that bed of seaweed and eventually sat right in the middle of that patch of seaweed. I I've always contended that that, that type of seaweed is, is not really affecting the anchors much. It's uh, just this loose material that's sort of laying on the, on the surface. No, I don't believe there's much of, much of any rooting going on. But uh, like I say, the anchor, uh, it, does, it does release every time and then resets, but I have to treat it gently. I'm not going to show you all 10 of these, but it did, it did produce holding power. Uh, after each and every one of these 10 resets. Oddly, the last two of these 10 resets uh, felt the best from, from the top side anyway. As I've stated before, in the seabeds in which I test, these Bruce anchors always seem to make at least some holding power. Now we've moved over to the clean, loose sand seabed. We'll do a straight line holding power check with the long or the 80 foot 5 16th chain. The test boat's pulling in a direction slightly different than the way the anchor landed there, uh, but it, it doesn't seem to matter. This anchor rotates that little bit just fine. Anchor's nice and upright. Uh, the, the, the holding here appears to be a little less for this anchor than the previous sandy mud sea bite, seabed. Uh, the anchor was fairly solid at 315 pounds of pull, and then at 395, the anchor does have a release. Uh, compared to the previous seabed, uh, with this road, uh, it would hold 395 and not release until 465. As, as, what's, as usual, the anchor does reset, but does not make as much holding power. Now, because of this fairly low ultimate holding in this situation, for the veering test, which is next, I once again have to downgrade the thrust compared to the other 20-pound range anchors. And here we are. We're at eight times camera speed. We're still in this, the clean sand. Uh, the boat is veering to starboard. And what we saw there was a big release or a big lurch at 60 degrees of veer. And once again, the anchor partially resets but never really regains its grip in the seabed. Here's a clip of the Lumar Claw in that same clean sand seabed. Keep in mind that with these long, heavy chain roads and this very low holding, that the, there's no chance that the chain is lifting at the point of the anchor. So it's getting an infinite scope pull, in effect. And this anchor is very poor. It never penetrates any deeper than as shown, and it only made about 215 pounds of resistance. And we're back to the Bruce. 
Now we've moved over to Scow Bay in the soft mud, and this seabed is where this anchor does really quite well. It's comparable and even better to several or many of the other 20-pound range anchors. I should mention that I'm comparing and talking about non-pivoting fluke anchors only. The, the Danforth or Fortress anchors, they're in a class by themselves in the seabed. They, they can produce uh, many times more holding power than, than a lot of these anchors. So when I say it does well here, it does well compared to other non-pivoting fluke anchors, which none of them really do great. That said, this anchor does execute a 315-pound baseline veer just perfectly. That's the standard that I use for these type of anchors. And after the veer, I was able to increase power to pretty high levels. Um, it, it, it was not moving fast at all at about 500 pounds of pull. At 600 plus pounds, it was achieving about two knots. And like that claw anchor that I tested a few weeks ago, I just went ahead and increased, just kept bumping up power to see if I could get it to release, and I could not. It was up close to 1,000 pounds of thrust, and the anchor was just dragging happily along at about six knots. So uh, that, that certainly has no practical value, I think, but uh, pr pretty interesting that these anchors are so tenacious here in this seabed, uh, they just won't let go. Next is a brand new protocol here in the soft mud. Uh, this is a 180 degree reset, conducted a bit slower than the, the resetting I do over in the sandy mud. This one I just passed over at two knots, and uh, we just saw the anchor set. That was the chain going by there for the, on the reset, and the anchor is now pivoted around, and what, what happens is that it takes a while for the road to stretch out and you know, uh, come up against uh, the full thrust of that boat. When it does, we saw the anchor actually release from the seabed. It pulled out, and now it is under underground. It's it's right beneath the camera. We would see it, but it is just really well buried, and it eventually penetrates deep enough and brings the whole mess to a stop. So that's just wonderful. Uh, I did this five times. That That is gonna be my protocol here. I'll do this five times to each and every anchor. And for this anchor, uh, it was very successful four out of five of those times. Just, just one was a longer drag. Last area we'll look at is the cobblestone seabed. This anchor is about middle of the pack compared to any of the other 20 pound range anchors. Ends up holding about 135 pounds and it's, that's solid holding. When I give that uh, figure for this seabed, that is uh, indicating no movement whatsoever. Uh, the very best anchor here was the 21 pound XL number no. 2. It did 185 pounds of holding. Again, it's a very low number. It's not, not very confidence inspiring. Uh, obviously, if one was to spend the night here and, and try to sleep, you would want to keep one eye open. Here's the Lumar Claw and the Cobblestone. It had virtually the same holding and penetrating ability as the Genuine Bruce. Here's a look at the latest 20 pound range anchor ranking chart. We see the 21 pound Bruce ended up right near the bottom of the chart. It's uh, obviously a little better than the Lumar Claw, but its numbers are really quite low. Uh, the only number that's worth writing home about would be the soft mud holding. It gets a four there, so that's pretty good. Uh, speaking of good, we see the word good right next to that four. That corresponds to the new 180 degree reset in the soft mud. Uh, remember, it was uh, successful four out of five times, so that's, that is good. Uh, above there, we see a fair. That is for the 26 pound CQR. It, it got out there and uh, executed that test as well. Uh, it was only successful two times out of five. And when I get all those question marks filled in, I'll make another video and just show you all the anchors back to back and how they reset in the soft mud. To the right, we see a blank spot there in the surf sand column for the 21 pound Bruce. I did not make it out to the beach yet with this anchor, but soon I will go back to the beach uh, and I'll take all six of my Bruce anchors and continue with that scaling study. Here's a look at the latest 20 pound performance graph. This depicts holding or resistance divided by the anchor weight. 
Uh, we have the 21 Crown Bruce toward the far right. We can see its numbers are quite low, except for the green bar there. That's the soft mud holding. It's really quite good, even compared to some of the very best anchors. Uh, the big news for this chart, however, is the addition of two new seabeds, the clean sand holding in purple and the cobblestone hold in red. Uh, that The red bars and the cobblestone, there's not much to talk about. Really, the, the main takeaway here is just how little the holding is there compared to other seabeds. Uh, maybe the message should just be stay away. However, the purple bars or the clean sand holding is very good holding power. In fact, the holding power is so good it exceeded the bollard pull of the test boats, and that is why we've got arrows there. All we can say is that those values represent what the anchor could hold and potentially more. I just couldn't pull anymore. Obviously, if I take the winch to that area and retest these, which I will, uh, we'll get the actual max holding power. Uh, but as it is, that's just the, that ran up against the, the limitations of the pull of the test boats. Now, you might wonder, well, why are us all those arrows at different heights if they uh, were being pulled, pulled by the same boat? But they weren't. There was two different boats with two different pulls. Uh, one was 1325. The other was 1150. Also, the anchors aren't, don't weigh the same. And it doesn't matter how you rearrange the math, you're just not going to get arrows at the same height unless you arbitrarily cut them off at the same height. But I, I chose to just stick with the data here. That, that's all we know. We know that those anchors in purple there with those arrows, they could do that and probably more. How much? I won't even guess. Well, I don't normally wear my heart on my sleeve, but I got to come clean. I, I love Bruce anchors. I uh, used them for decades and always had great experience. I, I like the way they are shaped. Uh, I do a lot of metal work and to me it is a piece of industrial art. Peter Bruce, the designer, was clearly a genius. It was a landmark anchor design and I, I can't say enough good things about it. So if this anchor could have possibly even got half as good a performance as the better modern anchors, I would I'd call myself a Bruce anchor man. I'd put one of my big Bruce's on Panope and live happily ever after. But it has just got a real problem with holding power in some seabeds. As always, I appreciate everyone's interest and especially the donations to these anchor studies. Good day.